Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to learn how to compute the corporate income tax liability under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017. This topic is covered in the corporate income tax course, the CPA exam regulation section, as well as the enrolled agent exam. As always, I would like to remind you, my viewers, to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create a LinkedIn account. It's very good for your professional image and for networking purposes. If you're a Facebook user, please like my Facebook page. You want to make sure you subscribe to my YouTube. This is where I host all my lectures. Please like and share my YouTube. If you like them and share them, please like them and share them. I do have a website where I have all my lectures as well listed there, but the complete set is on youtube and i always have cpa deals on my website so please visit my website in case you are studying for your cpa exam so let's take a look first at the corporate tax formula what the corp what does the corporate tax formula looks like well we're going to start with gross income so you're going to get all your gross income then you're going to deduct your deductions now your deductions would include operating expenses it will not include charitable contribution. It will not include dividend received deduction. It would not include NOL carryback if it applies. If it does not include short-term capital loss carryback, and it does not include domestic production activities. So you basically, it's your income minus your, upper, in, in a sense, your operating expenses. You're going to get your taxable income for a charitable contribution limit. Remember, you can contribute as much as possible to charities. However, you can only deduct 10% of that. Therefore, we're going to take your taxable income that we computed here times 10%, and that's going to give you your deduction for charitable contribution. Then from that, we're going to get to taxable income for dividend received deduction. Now we need to compute dividend received deduction, and this is the number that we will use for, for the computation of the dividend received deduction. Then once we compute the dividend received deduction, we can deduct the dividend received deduction. And that's going to get us to taxable income before carrybacks. Then if we have any carrybacks, we will subtract them, such as NOL carrybacks and short-term capital uh, loss carryback. Okay? Now bear in mind, NOL, it's now it's going to be going forward, not carry back, just in case we are looking at prior years. And from this, we can compute our taxable income. Here we have our taxable income. Now we're going to compute our taxes. How much taxes are we going to pay? Here's the good news. The good news is under the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, the corporate tax rate is a flat 21%. So simply put, whatever number you get here, whatever number you get here, you multiply it by... 21%. And also, the good news too, we no longer have alternative minimum tax. So the alternative minimum tax, it existed prior to the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, but it's, the, it's no longer for corporate. Let's be more specific. For corporate clients, it's no longer applicable. It's repealed. It means it's gone. Okay, that's all what you have to know. Now, historically, this was the tax rate for corporation or the tax rate structure before the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. Notice, between 0 and 50,000, you paid 15%. Between 50 to 75, that additional 25,000, you'll pay 7,500 plus 25% above the amount of 50, so on and so forth. It was progressive and similar to the how we compute the personal income tax. Now, it's a flat flat rate. Very simple. 21%. 21%. The best way to illustrate this, all these concepts or, you know, how to compute taxes and basically just kind of take a look at the taxes in comparison between corporate and individual is to work an example just to see how this all fits together. Benting Company, a calendar year entity, has one owner who's in the 37% tax bracket any net capital gain or dividend will be taxed at 20%. That's fine. BC gross income is 395 and its ordinary trade or business deduction is 245,000. Compute the federal income tax liability on BC income for the current year under the following assumption. Ignore the standard deduction or itemized deduction and the deduction for qualified business income. Okay. <clears throat> So basically, they want us to compute the taxes under various scenarios. Let's take a look at the first scenario. BC is operated as a sole proprietorship, and the owner withdrew $100,000 for personal use. Well, well, this is A. Let's look at this. This is option A. Well, the business made $395,000. Then we have to deduct 
operating expenses or business deduction 245,000 that's going to give us in total 150,000 simply put we have to pay 37 percent on that because that's the personal tax rate that we are giving simply put the individual will pay 59 55,500 okay now remember whether they took hundred thousand or not. That's that's uh, the owner took one hundred thousand for personal use. It does it does not really matter. It's not deductible. It's not deductible for tax purposes. B. BC is a corporation. Pays out one hundred thousand as a salary and pays no dividend to its shareholders. All right. So three hundred and ninety-five thousand minus two hundred and forty-five thousand and it pays 100 for the salary for that individual for the owner 100,000 that's going to give us taxable income of 50,000 now we're going to pay 21% on this 50,000 and that's going to give us 10,500 now remember the owner took out $100,000 as salary now the owner will have to pay 37% on that salary because that's it this owner will get a w2 therefore the owner will pay 37,000 now the taxes the total taxes under scenario B is this plus this okay let's look at scenario C let's see what C looks like C BC is operated as a corporation pays out no salary or dividend to its shareholder now we're not gonna be paying any salaries or dividend well, we have 395 in income minus 245. That's it. That's 150,000 times 21% because it's a corporation. That's 31,500. Now, remember, the owner did not take out salary. The owner did not take out dividend. So that's the only taxes under this scenario. That's the only taxes under this scenario okay now notice between a b and c c is the lowest amount of taxes why because the owner did not take out dividend did not take out any salaries therefore they pay the least amount of taxes now we're going to see later once we work with capital accumulation tax ta tax you know off sometimes you cannot not take out the dividend but that's we'll talk about this later but so far like this is the best option this is like le least amount of taxes I'm sorry this is the this one here is the this one here is the least amount of taxes and this will be second and this is the most amount of taxes okay the BC is operated as a corporation it pays out 100 as a salary to its shareholders and paid out the remainder of its earning as dividend okay so let's see 300 this is scenario the 395,000 minus the operating expenses for the business that's that's 245,000 minus $100,000 in salaries that's equal to 50,000 on the 50,000 we are going to pay 21 percent that's 10,500 that's the first amount of taxes now remember the owner took out a hundred thousand dollar in salaries well on the owner's individual tax return they have to pay 37 percent that's thirty seven thousand dollar are we done yet we're not done yet because any money that's any profit that's left we said it's being paid out so what's left is fifty thousand minus ten thousand five hundred remember the corporation end up with a taxable income as 50 minus taxes of 10,500 what's left is 39,500 39,500 now th now this 39,500 let me go back here this 39,500 the owner will have to pay 20 percent because they took this as dividend so 39,500 uh times 20 percent let's see how much is that T 
times 0 0.2, that's 7,900. That's 7,900. So there we go here. So under the last scenario, here's what happened. The corporation paid, the corporation paid 10,500. Then the owner paid 37,000 for the $100,000 salary and 7,900 because the owner took out the dividend. So notice it's uh, basically three, not three different taxes, but the point is when you take out money from the corporation, you pay taxes on it. And remember, dividend is not, is not tax deductible, so they, they didn't really get any tax deduction for that. So if we add everything up, if we add everything up, 10,000, I mean, let me just use a calculator for last scenario. So 7,900 plus 37,000 plus 10,500 equal to 54,500. 54, so overall, 54,400 under the scenario, which is still less than the if the if the under scenario a which is fifty five thousand five hundred a hundred dollar less nevertheless but mathematically speaking it's less but again uh, there are other factors that we should consider whether we incorporate or not but this is basically computing the taxes under various scenarios if you have any questions any comments by all means email me uh, if you happen to visit my website for additional lectures please consider donating if you are studying for your CPA exam as always, study hard. It's worth it. Good luck.